Hi, everybody. So we're still waiting for the, today's hearing to finish. So I'm gonna have to go through some other stuff first, but hopefully I'm gonna just do a quick overview first of what we've um, already heard that has happened in the courthouse today. As always, this is supposed to be about Abby and Libby and getting justice for them. And today's, I don't know that it really is, but okay. Uh, here we go. My chat rules, I have the slow mode on, 15 seconds between messages. There are all types of opinions welcome in my chats. Just please be polite moderators. Just ban anybody in the chat who is being rude to anyone or commenting negatively about people instead of the case. You can click their name and just uh, choose hide from channel. People in the chat can click the name of an annoying person and block their messages yourself. If you wanna uh, reply directly to somebody so that they see you um, are direct, directly replying to them, type the at symbol plus the first few letters of someone's screen name to reply directly to that chatter, but your messages will be public. If I don't highlight your comment, it does not mean I disagree with you or dislike you. I mean, it could be, but it doesn't mean it. <laughs> um, everybody knows who's been in my chats, I fall behind because I'm busy rambling. So use the chat to talk to other people politely. In the top of the chat box, it defaults to show top chat, but you can change it to live chat to see even more comments. I try not to curse, but can't promise anything. I do not highlight comments that have curses in them because I just don't want to put anything on screen that people might find objectionable. Initials I use in my PowerPoint slides. I do these PowerPoint slides because people say they appreciate them to try, try and do summary. So B slash R is Baldwin and Rosie, the defense attorneys. NM is Nick McClelland, who is the prosecutor. LE is law enforcement and PP is the Purdue professor who gave some opinions on the onism symbols found at the crime scene. So today, March 18th, there's quite a few different issues that they've already gone through. So upgraded charges. On January 18th, McClelland filed a request to amend the charges to also include two counts of murder while committing or attempting to commit kidnapping, which were previously filed on October 28th, 2022, when Rick was first arrested, two counts of murder and two counts of kidnapping. So there's one count for each, Abby and Libby. So Gull approved both counts of murder but dismissed both counts of kidnapping. No new evidence was presented. Change of venue motion. All future hearings will be in Carroll County. The past few have been happening at Judge Gull's courthouse in Allen County. Motion to recuse Gull. The defense wanted her off the case or at least off the contempt hearing and she den denied it. One of the main issues today is the contempt against Bald and Rosie and Gull denied a request for delay. McClelland argued that Bald and Rosie should be held in contempt of court for the following, a trend of not being completely honest with the court. They violated the gag order in the case by issuing a press release on December 1st, 2022, although the defense has argued that was not officially put into place the following day on December 2nd. But McClelland replied to that saying, well, in judges chambers, the four of us, Gull, McClelland, Bald and Rosie said, McClelland was going to be file, filing a request for a gag order and Bald and Rosie refused to sign it and saying, oh, we're not gonna try this case in the public. And then on December 1st, they issued a press release. Information, including crime scene photos leaked to the public through Baldwin's office and Baldwin should not have been sharing information with his former employee, Mitch Westerman, who ended up coming to meet Baldwin. And I guess he saw the crime scene photos of Abby and Libby's bodies on the conference room table as he waited for Baldwin took the photos and obviously sent it to other people who then just kept sending it to other people. Continue with contempt, Bald and Rosie have another week to submit a follow-up memo, memo on today's hearing to Judge Gull. After that, McClelland will get a week to submit his reply. And after that, Judge Gull will have up to 30 days to make a ruling, which could possibly be, possibly be a few days before the May 13th start to the trial. Regarding jury selection, it's supposed to begin May 13th. Again, the case is supposed to be May 13th to the 31st. So jur jurors are gonna be selected at the Allen County Court Courthouse. Once they're selected, the trial will shift to Carroll County and a motion to dismiss the entire case is still in session. So. Um, I'm just looking to see. So there were a, a few other uh, filings submitted today. So I'm going to review 
some of these as we wait for confirmation about what has happened on the motion to dismiss. So give me about like, I have, I think about 10 slides here. There's some interesting new information that I think if you're following the case, you should know. So one filing, March 17th today, or yesterday, actually, state's notice of submission of supplemental witness exhibit list to the defense filed by the prosecution. The summary was just a list of witnesses and exhibits the state may call or use at the trial. Also filed yesterday, state's response to defendant's motion to compel and request for sanctions filed by the prosecution. So the summary is all discovery and exculpatory information has been provided to Baldwin and Rosie. When the defense has requested information, McClelland has located them even when this results in providing a duplication of prior discovery and when items appear to be irrelevant. McClelland is not required to hand over every lead and inquiry during the six plus year investigation as part of discovery, much of which is neither relevant nor related to the state of Indiana versus Richard Allen. However, McClelland has gone beyond the requirements of discovery in what they have provided. When additional information is received, um, McClelland forwards it to Baldwin and Rosie. For instance, the state received, uh, recently became aware that four interviews from 2017 of Becky Patty, Mike Patty, Ron Logan, and the male of the quote unquote arguing couple at the uh, trails that day around three o'clock were recorded on an iRecord device and has had not been uploaded to the discovery portal but have now been given to Baldwin and Rosie, who had the reports since 2020, uh, February 2023, so it is not new information. Baldwin and Rosie asked the state to re-interview witnesses, and the state has done so and provided the interviews. The geofence reports have been provided to Baldwin and Rosie. Continuing, in discovery provided to Baldwin and Rosie, one hard drive is missing interviews from February 14th to February 20th of 2017, and one other hard drive contains video interviews without audio, which it gets even worse. I'll get to that later. The state is at the same disadvantage of only being able to review narrative summaries of those interviews. The defense mischaracterized the information specific to the Purdue professor. In reality, the re they requested the name of a Purdue professor based on a report in discovery that did not identify the author. The state endeavored to find such information locating Professor Turco and disclosed this to the defense. The, in, the interpretation of his report is up for debate amongst the parties, and the Purdue professor states the defense has mischaracterized his opinions. If the defense would speak directly to that professor, they would know his opinion is not consistent with their characterization, which to me, I'm, I'm wondering, has, is it true that Baldwin and Rosie still have not interviewed this Purdue professor? Also, Walden and Rosie keep making these statements about these Odinists, but I've not seen anything where Walden and Rosie have actually interviewed the Odinists themselves or the sisters of the Odinists or ex-wives and all these other people and the son of one of the Odinists who was apparently home with them when the murders were happening. Contrary to Walden and Rosie's representation, McClelland did respond to their letter of February 20th of this year and provided a response on March 8th by email and e-discovery. The state has not intentionally withheld discovery and therefore sanctions and attributing delay to the state is not appropriate. Another motion from yesterday, state's motion to enter protective order for evidence gathered from the Indiana Department of Correction filed by prosecution. McClellan requests the court to enter a protective order over all evidence and testimony subpoenaed from the Indiana Department of Correction, which is they control like the prisons and stuff and limit, limit the questioning of all Indiana Department of Corrections staff to their dis direct interaction with the defendant, Richard Allen. The state has an articulable interest to ensure the safety and security of its prison system and the policies and procedures that govern this outside agency. The Indiana Department of Corrections and its employees are not a party to this case. The time Rick spent at Westville is not relevant except in his own actions and statements. Westville staff and the in, inner workings of the Indiana Department of Correction are outside the scope of this proceeding. That the state of Indiana filed two counts of murder on October 28th, 2023, which McClellan made an error, it obviously was the 2022. Rick has been housed at IDOC for safekeeping. Trial Rule 26C permits the court to protect against oppression, undue burden, and expense by requiring that discovery be conducted on specified terms and conditions. 
Continuing, IDOC has become an interested non-party in this proceeding. There are concerns based on prior behavior. Walden and Rosie will release information to the media that could publicly embarrass the IDOC or place its employees in danger. There are permiss permissible ways to conduct depositions that allow the evidence to be protected from the media under Trial Rule 26A. Trial Rule 26B1 limits discovery to matters relevant to the subject matter involved in the pending action, including the claims and defense of the parties. Walden Rosie has not made a record as to what evidence they plan to elicit from IDOC that would be admissible evidence for the underlying charges. Uh-oh, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> there is potential that any probative value that may be gained by unrestrained subject matter depositions is outweighed by the prejudicial effect on the witnesses and the state. Next up, also from yesterday, motion, this is from the defense. This has some interesting facts in it or accusations. Motion for parity in resources to reconsider the, the, hello, the denial of anticipated defense costs or to exclude evidence filed by Baldwin and Rosie. Um, this summary is quite uh, maybe like seven uh, slides. So the summary is Baldwin and Rosie asked Gull to issue an order to provide parity in the resources available for investigation and presentation of litigation. To balance the scales of justice, Rick asks McC McClelland be required to pay out of his personal finances for investigative services, evidence processing, and expert fees as the court's recent order has reduced Balls and Rosie to personally advance those expenditures for Rick's defense. Rick requests Gull prohibit McClelland from offering any testimony or evidence at his trial related to the bullet found at the crime scene, the digital data collected by law enforcement, or Rick's alleged confession to his wife on the phone April 3rd, and apparently there might be some more to other people at Westville. While these requests may seem drastic, they are necessary considering Gull's denial of access to resources to Richard Allen. Alternatively, Rick requests that he be granted approval for expected expenses to defend himself. Continuing, relevant facts and procedural history. The defense team consists of seven people, Baldwin and Rosie, a man na named Matt Hoffman, who's a former fire investigator. He sorts through tips and analyzes evidence. Max Baker is the full-time student at Indiana Bloomington who assists as he is able. Both Hoffman and Baker were the two people who went to see Rick on April 3rd. And apparently that day is the day he called his wife and according to the prosecution, admitted several times that he is the one who killed Abby and Libby. So it'll be interesting to see if we ever find out what Hoffman and Baker discussed with Rick or what kind of evidence they provided him that may have forced him, not forced him, but caused him to call his wife. Walden and Rosie also have two paralegals who assist with administrative tasks. And somebody named Brian Alvey is an investigator who speaks with witnesses and does some other tasks. Continuing with the same motion. Briefly, the defense utilized an investigator out of Utah, and I think it might be some guy named Jason Jensen, due to his experience, but found that geography interfered with the ability to perform the functions needed in Indiana. The court allowed Hoffman be paid at $15 an hour, not to exceed $6,000, which I was uh, surprised was that low. He was paid all $6,000, but he's done like thousands of hours of work that have exceeded $6,000. After Baldwin and Rosie came back on the case in late January, Gull denied further payment to Hoffman, who is continuing to work at least 30 to 40, 40 hours per week on this case. Without Hoffman, the defense would not be able to be prepared for trial nearly as quickly as it is. October 23, Rosie submitted invoices for his and Hoffman's time and expenses for about $51,000. Walden has been paid twice, but only three to four months after multiple requests. Rosie has not been paid for six months of work despite multiple requests, which it seems kind of ridiculous that it's taking Gull this long to pay the defense attorneys. So I wrote here, where are the payments to Mitch Westerman for providing strategy services based on the evidence Baldwin was sharing with him? Continuing February 24th, 2024, Baldwin and Rosie filed an ex parte motion for funding for experts, but on March 7th, Judge Gull denied some of their requests. The defense feels like there are three pieces of critical evidence for this case, the bullet, 
data from phones belonging to the victims and other individuals and Allen's purported post-arrest confession, end quote. Walden and Rosie need expert assistance to invest, uh, yeah, to investigate all three of those items. Regarding the bullet, the Indiana State Police Crime Lab's firearms unit employs 15 people who helped examine the bullet that was found two feet from Abby's body. Walden and Rosie retained a firearm and tool mark expert for analysis. Gull authorized reimbursement, but denied the request to continue receiving the expert services, finding that the request was quote unquote unsupported. Regarding digital data, they said there was a large amount of data from phones, location data, and social media. Uh, Rosie paid a digital forensic expert $3,700 and was reimbursed, but Gull denied the request to continue receiving the expert services, finding that his, this request was also unsupported, which I don't know why she isn't giving more details about why she's denying some of this stuff. Finally, for this part here, Rick's alleged confession. The state has utilized many agencies in all of their investigation. Rick's alleged confession was obtained while in solitary confinement. McClelland has provided interviews with Westville prisoners and correctional officers about their opinions regarding Rick's state of mental health, practically seeking clinical diagnostic opinions from these lay witnesses. When I read that, I was like, well, Walden and Rosie previously said they thought Rick became schizophrenic between March 24th and April 3rd, 2023 in their April 5th motion to modify safekeeping order, trying to seemingly take attention away from Rick's April 3rd call to his wife. Walden and Rosie retained a clinical psychologist to evaluate Rick and health records and video relevant to his confinement conditions. Gull authorized funds to retain the expert, but additional services are needed but Gull denied that, denied that request for additional funding, finding that the quote, unsupported request is denied as an unreasonable expenditure of county funds, end quote. Walden and Rosie requested to hire a confession expert to educate counsel and possibly the jury on the impacts of solitary confinement in relation to a confession. Walden and Rosie learned that Rick's pretrial detention in the segregation unit at Westville may be the first time an innocent man has been confined in such a setting in the history of Westville and possibly Indiana. The impact of Rick's unprecedented pretrial detention circumstances on his overall mental health is germane to his defense. Despite this, the court declined defense counsel's request for additional funding as being quote unquote unsupported. Just a few more slides and then I'll see if there's an update on the motion to dismiss and get to your comments. February 24th of this year, Walden and Rosie filed ex parte motion for funding for experts, but on March 7th, Judge Gull denied some of the requests. I feel like I just said this. What? <laughs> did I? Yeah, I did. What did I do? I must have gone up instead of down. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Gull also declined funding for a forensic pathologist to review the crime scene, the pathology of the victims, and the cause, manner, and timing of their deaths of Abby and Libby. Baldwin, Baldwin, Baldwin and Rosie requested funding for in-office assistance services. McClelland has help from at least two prosecutors and many law enforcement uh, investigators. And in February 2023, McClelland obtained funding to hire, hire a full-time investigator, a full-time secretary, and a special prosecutor for this case, and also to get raises for himself his current secretary, and his chief deputy prosecutor, given the additional hours they're working on this case. He was given an additional $2.1 million for Rick's case. Uh, McClelland will call experts for tool mark identification, odinism, and blood pattern slash stain analysis as expert. I wrote here that that's most likely for the unspent round, probably to dispute the defense claims that branches and runes and the Odinist ritualistic human sacrifice are not actually things that happen um, in general, whatever Odinist practices. And also the blood pattern stain, I guess might be to say it was not painted, an F painted on the tree with Libby's blood, but actually um, maybe Libby, I guess was stabbed and her blood got on it, whatever. I don't wanna to get too graphic. The state's resources are endless compared to the defense having to pretty much like beg for stuff and not get paid or approved. Walden and Rosie received 25 hard drives containing at least 40 terabytes of information 
plus an additional 300 gigabytes of e-discovery, and only if I had had a year and a half and an in-office assistant to help. I thought McClellan previously said a few weeks ago that he's turned over 60 terabytes, which at the time I said, no, no, I'm sorry, 26 terabytes, which I used some online source and it says, uh, 26 terabytes is approximately 169 million pages of evidence, but obviously not all the evidence was just pages and stuff. McClellan violated the local rules on discovery by dumping massive amounts of discovery, much of it exculpatory in nature, which means it's good for Rick and shows he's innocent, on Bald and Rosie, giving them a short amount of time to review. In a previous filing, Bald and Rosie said, they should have received every single bit of evidence within 30 days of them being assigned. So they were assigned November 14th, 2022. So Walden and Rosie argued they should have received every single bit of evidence by December 14th, 2022. Um, they were also saying that the distance to Rick at, he's now at Wabash Correctional Facility. It pre prevents Walden and Rosie from routine visits, but I'm almost certain I saw a recent article saying that Wabash Prison has a video system where inmates can uh, speak to their attorney. So I don't know why Walden and Rosie are not utilizing that, or are they, and just not referencing it in this filing. Due to McClellan's discovery violations, Walden and Rosie need funding for more staff, or they will be forced to pay for the assistance services from the $100 per hour rate that Walden and Rosie get at, as Rick's public defenders. Gull denied the funding request, finding that one assistance invoices had been inadequate and the need for the assistance was unsupported. Well, is she telling them what they need to have the invoices be adequate and what they need to submit to make sure that it's supported correctly to pay for this assistance? According to state and federal rules and laws, Rick is entitled to adequate preparation to defend himself at a fair trial but it is being prevented by forcing Bald and Rosie to pay out of pocket and then hope Gall will approve their expenses months later or flat out denial of funding for staff and experts to prepare Rick's defense. Gall should exclude all of the state's witnesses who would testify as to any matter in which an expert could have assisted Rick in his defense of that same matter. But due to Gull denying expenses for expert witnesses, um, will deny Rick access to the same opportunities as the state of Indiana, ergo violating his due process rights, which I agree if the prosecution is allowed to hire an expert on a certain matter, then obviously, well, it seems obvious to me the defense should have that same right. These requests are made to level the playing field between Rick and the government with its infinite amount of resources, all of which are currently being used to overwhelm Rick and his understaffed and underfunded legal team. Uh, I think there's like two more slides. Also filed yesterday by the defense, amended motion to compel and request for sanctions. They're amending the March 12th filing to compel McClelland to provide answers concerning the existence of certain discovery and if it existed to provide the actual discovery. On March 8th, McClelland did provide some answers, but Bald and Rosie admitted they did not see it. There is still outstanding discovery McClelland claims does not exist when common sense causes Bald and Rosie to believe it must exist. McClellan provided a report about how all videos between April, yeah, this is no and not good. Let me restart it. McClellan provided a report about how all videos between April 28th and June 30th of 2017 were also lost. Bald and Rosie want a complete report of how they were lost and what was done to retrieve them. So we know previously, February 14th to the 20th of 2017 were written over because I guess somebody didn't push a button or something. So now this is saying two months of videos are also lost. If you can see my face right now, um, <laughs> my eyebrows are up and my jaw dropped. It's such incompetence. And this incompetence is preventing not only the defense, but also the prosecution from accessing, I mean, McClelland wasn't even the prosecutor in 2017. Well, maybe late 2017, but he also does not have access to these interviews. And obviously it's important for Rick and Bald and Rosie to have access to them, but why is stuff not being done properly? Bald and Rosie want a list of all people who were interviewed during those two months, but quote, there is no comprehensive written log 
that was used to document date and time, subject and participants for each interview room, end quote. Walter and Rosie want a list of law enforcement who may have interviewed suspects, witnesses, and reports. So it's not only that they lost these videos, but they never properly took a log of who was talking to who. All right, this is the last slide. Is anybody still watching? Um, <laughs> Baldwin and Rosie are concerned that potential exculpatory witnesses and statements are apparently forever lost. And they only found out 14 months after the defense should have learned of this lost evidence because, and also they only learned about it because they inquired for more information recently. In his March 8th, 2024 response, McClellan failed to produce similar reports explaining how the audio is missing on certain videos. So Walden and Rosie want that report. So there's a week of videos missing. There's a bunch of other videos that don't have audio. And there's two months of other videos that are also totally missing. Walden and Rosie requested the existence of phone data, but McClellan claims that no phone dump ex um, evidence exists from Kelsey German's phones, nor Mike, Becky, or Cody Patty. Those are four people who were living at the same house as Libby when the murders occurred. Walden and Rosie want to know if that phone data was ever collected and lost. Walden and Rosie want all geofencing data and the names of who interpreted it. So that was the end of my slides. Let me go real quick to see what's going on on the local news to see if there's an update on motion to dismiss. Or maybe I'll ask in the chat. Hello. Where are we here? Does anybody know if the motion to dismiss was uh, decided upon? I doubt she's going to dismiss it, but I just want to say. All right, I'm going to go back up to... I'll start. We'll figure it out in the next three hours. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody from all around the world. Thank you for saying hi and joining. Let's see what we're doing here. Thank you for the nice comments. I'm just looking to see what comment I should hire or highlight first. Hi, Xtina and Mr. Xtina. <laughs> Hi, Stacy. Stacy says Mitch Westerman, who leaked the photo, is a lawyer and knew better also. Well, I thought he never passed the bar. So he was actually, I don't know, I think currently he's, or at least I don't know if he lost his job after this became public. He was like, a, he, I think currently he's like a compliance officer, but I don't know. It seems like he sent it to his former military friend who was, who was the guy who killed himself over being investigated about it. So I know that Baldwin argued that, I guess he said at cer a certain point, Gull said that the defense could uh, talk to other people about strategy. I don't know if we're going to learn more, inform more information about exactly what Baldwin was uh, sharing with Westerman, because I think McClellan said that Baldwin sent the Franks memo to Westerman before it came out with all the exhibits, which may have included the photos of the crime scene. Hi, Miss Dog Lover. I haven't seen you in a while. Thank you so much for your generosity. You, I guess, think that Rick is guilty, apparently, based on your hashtag. Um, I'm waiting to see all the evidence before we ride before I decide. Hi, Navalis True Crime. I'm wearing my grandmother's Irish, I think like Navalis. So I'm wearing this in honor of St. Patrick's Day. We have an update. What is the update? <laughs> Tell me what the update is. Hi, KT recovers. Zero so far. Hi, Oscar. Does Indiana have the death penalty? Yes, they do, but they have not um filed for Rick to get the death penalty yet. Now was true crime. Thank you. Quote, when the contempt hearing wrapped up, the judge gave the defense team another week to submit a post-hearing memo. 
the prosecution will then have a week to respond. At that point, the judge will have, I think I said 30 days. So thank you for sharing that. There you go. Thank you. So my, I think the trial starts in 56 days and somebody nice gave like did a calculation and the maximum amount, amount of time before a ruling on this contempt issue is 54 days from today, which I highly doubt Gull is going to remove Bald and Rosie two days before the trial. I'm sure, what, did somebody say you disagree? That's okay. Oh my gosh, all right, sorry. Haya Watha, WTHR reporter who was in the courtroom during this morning's hearing said, quote, Gull said, deny, 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 every time the defense raised a point, end quote says a lot when the mainstream media is infuriated by her actions. I obviously we don't know what, exactly what I guess Hennessy, Baldwin and Rosie were saying. Just because somebody makes a point doesn't mean that it's valid. And I'm not I'm not saying that Gull is not ridiculous sometimes, but <laughs> Oscar is asking, have they found any new evidence? Well, the prosecution is keeping their mouth shut about all the evidence that they have. They have not leaked the exact transcript of Rick's confession in almost, it's been almost a year in two weeks, and we still don't know exactly what Rick said. So what does the prosecution have that they're going to present um, Oscar? So no exact new information about why McClellan felt he could upgrade these charges to saying not only was Rick bridge guy, but also the murderer. Oscar left. <laughs> Somebody said once, you're, we're not an airport. You don't have to announce your departure. Hi, Brandy. I agree with you. I hate that this has become more about Gull versus the defense than about justice for Abby and Libby. So awful. Yes, yeah, like not just them, but also it's like the prosecutor. Prosecutor? The prosecutor, McClelland, just like the four of them are just arguing at this point about everybody's incompetent. And as I just showed before, law enforcement was incompetent in 2017 and beyond. I, I can't believe that they lost so many of these videos and stuff. Hi, AKA Radar. Everything Rick Allen has been through is relevant. To what? The jury um, making the proper decision? And if so, should they have everything that Rick has done at Westville and said? I want the proper decision to be made. If Rick is guilty, I want him to be found guilty. If he's innocent, I want him to be found innocent. So I want the jury to have access to everything that is relevant. And if some man is saying, I killed Abby and Libby, I think the jury should hear that stuff. Hi to all the Australians who are waking up early to watch this. Yeah, it's ridiculous that Rosie has not been paid in six months. I, I don't know what her goal's possible ex explanation can be for this stuff taking so long to approve. Hi, Amy. I just don't see a way this trial can go on with both Gull and Baldwin and Rosie. There's just too much tension and animosity between them. In my opinion, the facts are the facts. So. Just let Bald and Rosie, Rick says he wants Bald and Rosie as his attorneys, let them present whatever rebuttal they have to whatever facts McClelland is going to present. The Supreme Court of Indiana said Gull should not remove Bald and Rosie and that Gull should not be removed. So I don't want another Supreme Court hearing to have these people continue to argue with each other why they should be removed. Brandy says, using the same logic, there's a reason Rick does not want the bullet discussed at trial. Yeah, there's valid points to both sides. Hi, Mariah. We, we belong together. <laughs> oh. Stacy, those paralegals are awful. That Frank's motion was written like a seventh grader. Oh, don't, don't get me started. Whoever wrote that or reviewed it was not competent. And I said previously, Bald and Rosie are incompetent for the Frank's memo in three ways. Either they wrote it 
and made all these errors. They had somebody else write it and they reviewed it and they didn't say, oh, you need to fix like these hundred plus errors, these basic ass mistakes. Or I think they did not write it and they did not read the entire thing that they submitted. So is that competent that they're submitting stuff that they're not even reading? In my opinion, no. Feel free to disagree. Hi, Miss Anonymous. This is not a fair justice system. Yeah, there's so many like errors that like nobody's following procedures and stuff in Indiana. It's like in all aspects of the government. Hi, Peter. Jason Jensen, Jansen, I think it's Jensen, is a Ron Logan nut job. All right, thank you for clarifying. Humanimal, did you get some sleep? Just listen to me talk for a few minutes and you'll fall asleep. Yeah, that is ridiculous. They'd, they should be fair and above board and not play games with funding. I agree. It's like if McClellan gets $2 million to present his case, why are Bald and Rosie getting like 100000 or something? Sorry, I'm just looking for comments. Hi, Lady Di. Judges should not have immunity, never held accountable. Well, obviously the Supreme Court said she go, made an error by removing Baldwin and Rosie, but they said she should stay on. Not that that means that they agree with everything she's done. How you say libertarian when someone violates someone's constitutional rights they should be punished not get a do-over and second chance to violate them stacy says each side always has to ask about funds and needs for certain things this no sorry that is common practice Hi, she, Alf Johnson. I wish people would hold our current Supreme Court to these high standards. Well, is Indiana being held to high standards? <laughs> They're not meeting them, if so. Oh my gosh. Hi, Hayden, thank you. I disagree. Can somebody ban me so I can leave the chat? AKA Radar, McClelland telling the defense what is discovery and not Lol. I don't know what you said. What's not allowed? Sorry, I'm behind. Uh, I'm only 20 minutes behind. <laughs> oh. Hi, not DB Cooper. One terabyte is about 1300 filing cabinet cabinets full of paper. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot of stuff. But it's a lot of stuff like people saying people from Timbuktu submitting crazy theories over five and a half years. No offense to people from Timbuktu. <laughs> AKA, Ray, I'm just gonna call you Radar, sorry. Rick is not allowed visitors and attorney visits will be the same as when Labrado went. Yeah, I agree with that's ridiculous. Um, I think like Westville and even the Cass County Sheriff were saying, well, if Rick is on suicide watch, he cannot see his family. I just don't understand why these prisons don't have a dedicated room for attorneys to meet their clients. That, I mean, there's obviously this huge issue that was brought up in the Franks memo where Baldwin and Rosie were saying the Odinist guards, or they call them Odinites, but the guards were videotaping Rick because apparently when they move inmates throughout the jail, they have to document it on video, but not use um, a microphone. But still, it just seems so crazy to me that there's not these dedicated rooms to talk between 
an attorney and a client. As you were saying, like Labrado was the temporary attorney who went to see Rick at Wabash uh, Correctional Facility. And they had to meet in like a kitchen where Rick was in shackles behind like a cell. And it's, they said it was nearly impossible to share evidence with Rick. So I think whatever the conditions are for an inmate at a county jail to meet with their attorneys should be the same situation provided to Rick at uh, a prison. Hi, Travis, the lawyer. The Supreme Court of the U.S. case on getting experts is the AKE case about 1985. Says that state has to fund experts if defendant can't pay. All right, thank you for sharing your knowledge. All those years of law school are helping me in my live chat. Thank you. Radar saying, yeah, they lost over two months of the first and critical evidence. Well, if it turns out that Rick is the only person who did this, then they obviously didn't lose much about Rick because they didn't uh, look into him into, until like five and a half years later, which I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm just saying it could turn out that all that information is not use, useful, but obviously it should be available. Hi, Wampo. Yeah, they just lost it. That's their excuse. I, I don't know how this stuff happens. High living vicariously HD in high definition. Incompetence often gets mistaken for being conspiratorial. Well, something's wrong. <laughs> Brandy, this has been handled incorrectly from the jump. Everyone involved should be ashamed of their work and their actions. I don't know. I just want the correct decision to be made at the end of the trial. If Rick's guilty, hopefully, hopefully he'll be found guilty. If he's innocent, he deserves to be found innocent and get million, millions of dollars for what he's been through the past year and a half. Hi, Lucky Lou. He can say he doesn't have access, but I personally do not believe him. Uh, I don't even remember what I was talking about 20 minutes ago. Sorry. <laughs> USA Libertarian, which motion to dismiss? Uh, Gull denied motion to recuse judge and prosecutor. Um, the defense filed a motion to dismiss the entire case, saying that McClelland did not turn over exculpatory evidence to the defense. Thank you, Ms. Doglover, again. Why are you in Cornwall? I'm going to come down there and give you a big hug. When I first started doing these live chats, I was putting pictures of Abby and Libby behind me, but for three hours, just watching, like seeing those girls in the background, smiling and knowing what happened, I've tried to replace my backgrounds with some more like serene type images while we're talking about such horrible things. Sorry. Hi, Kevin. Aloha. Part of me thinks Rick wants, wants to plead guilty. His admissions are the worst evidence against him. His timeline is indefensible. He made admissions to multiple people. Being on suicide, suicide watch equals guilty conscience. Well, it seems like he's been saying that he wants to harm himself since he first arrived at Westville within the first, it didn't say exactly within the first few days or weeks, but one of the motions said he started making harm, um, comments about harming himself when he arrived at Westville. I think we have to wait and see all this evidence and will we be given access to um, some of his discussions supposedly with medical or mental health professionals 
or even other inmates who I guess maybe at some at some point when Rick was on suicide watch, it said there were called um, not guardians. Do you guys remember what it's called? When an inmate who I guess behaves himself will sit outside of somebody's cell who is on suicide watch as a way to like help. So guards, I guess, don't have to do it themselves. So did Rick at any point act crazy or say certain admissions of guilt to the, those other uh, inmates? Because one of the requests said that there might be some interviews with other inmates talking about Rick's mental um, health status. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Travis, the lawyer, ESQ means he's a lawyer. At least that's what he says. Just because a judge overrules objections by itself doesn't necessarily mean anything. Sometimes you are objecting to just make a record, right? Thank you. Hi, Randy Gravin. Brad and Andy just sat and listened, and I sat in the back of the courtroom and watched Rick Snay getting mad and fighting with others. All right, thank you for the in-court report. So Hennessy, I guess, did all the talking, Randy, on or at least for the contempt hearing. Hi, run the world. The constitutional rights of citizens always must take precedence. Travis, the lawyer, says incompetence in an investigation is always relevant in a criminal case. Frick says, Bald and Rosie would do this with any judge. Well, I'm sure some people would say it's kind of their job, I guess, to defend Rick in every way possible. Wampo, why does it feel like everyone involved in this case is dead set on fumbling it? Well, I don't know. It remains to be seen. Is there enough evidence and facts to prove the truth and all this other drama and incompetence, possibly corruption won't matter in the end if the jury is able to see convincing evidence one way or the other. Hi, Peter. The truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, it'll never happen. Far too corrupt and corrupted. Hi, Ron Logan. Hi, Curtis. Is it just a coincidence that everything associated with the Odinist theory is mischaracterized, erased, or lost? How can Alan have a vigorous defense when everything related to it has disappeared? Well, we'll see. I mean, from what I've heard, at least the one um, Odinist, whatever you want to call them, BH clocked out at work at 2.45 p.m. So we know that 2.13 is when Libby started taking the video of Bridge Guy. So it doesn't seem like that guy could be Bridge Guy, at least. The other guy, PW, he apparently his son is going to testify or gave a deposition. I don't know the contents of that deposition. I'm not saying I do, but I've heard that the son was at home with that guy. So they obviously they lived in Delphi, so they would have had all, his kids would have had off just like Abby and Libby did. So is this son going to testify? My dad I, was home with me at the time of the murder. So. As a jury member, are you going to not believe this child? I don't know. I guess some people would not. Brandy says, I feel like it's easy to defend the defense when the prosecution isn't talking as much. I feel like we're only getting one side of the story and forming opinions on that. Yeah, it's like. The prosecution is kind of seemingly, well, they're filing, obviously, this contempt hearing, which has nothing to do with, I guess, the case. But it seems like the defense is revealing a lot of stuff that 
and the prosecution is holding stuff until the trial. Hi, Reeker. The only thing Gull's no, Gull knows how to say is deny. She is unfair, and it's embarrassing the Supreme Court had to reinstate the lawyers because she made a quote-unquote mistake. Well, I don't know what to say. But I do agree with Taylor. I feel so bad for the girls' families. This case should have never turned into anything like this. It's not about Abby and Libby at all anymore. I mean, I just think of like, if Rick truly is the guy who was bridge guy and the killer, this should have been solved or he should have been arrested at least within the first two weeks. Seven years later of the families wondering who did this, like they've had so much stress for seven years. That was so unnecessary if Rick truly is um, guilty. And it's just like law enforcement mistakes, stuff that we don't even know has caused so much grief for these families. It's crazy. I called out McClellan for his mistake. Hey, hey. <laughs> Lucky Lou wants it to go back to the Supreme Court. They need to hear this. Hear what though? I say just get to the facts of the case and all this incompetence by the prosecutor, defense, judge, whatever, deal with that after the facts are dealt with. Because Rick, if, if he's innocent, he's still like sitting in a cage every day for a year and a half. I'm sure he wants to get this over with if he truly is innocent. I've not seen enough to go either way if he truly is innocent or not. I'm waiting for the trial. Babu's Frick, enough with immunity. Is Supreme Court of Indiana corrupt too? Shaking my freaking head. USA Libertarian makes a good point. I'm not going to say it's your first one. Okay. Um, McClelland literally read four ex parte documents he wasn't allowed to. Yes, I, I agree. That's. Is that incompetence or being shady and corrupt? An ex parte filing, as far as I know, it's like if the defense writes ex parte in the heading, McClelland is not supposed to read it at all, but he admitted that he read all four of the um, defense's ex parte motions asking for like funding for various experts and stuff. So, McClellan then said that the defense wasn't filing properly. And apparently there was an issue with a clerk at Carroll County Courthouse saying, oh, I thought ex parte just meant that the public does not get access to it, but McClellan does, which if McClellan has been an attorney for 15 years, he should know if it says ex parte, he should not be opening it and reading it or even have access to it. So why wouldn't he say to the clerk, you're making a mistake. I should not be seeing this. I'm sure some people are freaking out saying, duh, he's corrupt. Yeah, I'm not talking about drama between random people. Sorry. I, ca I care about the case and facts and not random freaks. <laughs> Lady died. Judges make wrong decisions all the time with people's lives in their hands. A lawyer can be disbarred, but a judge can only be removed, but still be a judge. No accountability. Hi, Al.
I'm just looking for uh, topics we have not discussed yet. Radar. Apparently, some are still in court. After dismissed, I'm told she held the motion to dismiss charges. All right. What does it mean, held? <laughs> All right, I'll see if there's any uh, updates in the next comments. Yeah, this is a good point, Cinder. I want to know why McClellan's co-counsel did not stop him from filing against the ex parte motion, knowing he wasn't supposed to even see it. I, that's a very good point. A guy named Jim Latrell was hired and he's paid to help McClelland out. And how is he not saying, yo, bro, like ex parte means no. I don't know, shake my head at this stuff. Hi, Kay. Nice to see you. I appreciate your nice comments all the time and your generosity. Thank you for joining. Ronnie read or read 70 days evidence lost isn't incompetence. It is deliberate. Well, is there some kind of report? Apparently there's not, unfortunately in 2017 saying we lost this. Like, I don't understand how this happens. And apparently McClelland has not given a report yet to say to the defense how this one happened. I know there was some kind of explanation about the February 14th to the 20th, 2017, that first week of erased over videos where they said, I guess somebody, I don't know if they gave that explanation or not. They said it was like a six terabyte digital video recorder and it recorded over the first week of interviews, which is insane. Not DB Cooper. Travis is a real attorney. Well, like Whitney Houston said to Diane Sawyer, I want to see the receipts. Okay. <laughs> Just because you put ESQ in your screen name doesn't make you an attorney. I'm kidding. I know I know he is. He's a nice person. High reliable evidence. Is there going to be any of that in this case? I'm shining. Sorry. <laughs> the state does not have the right to say what is relevant, useful, or exculpatory. Yaya must have been disagreeing with me. 70 days early in that investigation, not useful. What I'm saying is, if Rick was bridge guy, law enforcement did not investigate him at all. So whatever they were investigating apparently never led to arresting anybody for five and a half years. So I'm just saying some of that stuff that they looked into may not have had anything to do with Richard Allen and his motive and being on the trails that day. I still have not received any kind of comment under my video. How did Richard Allen not see the four girls between 1230 and 130 or bridge guy? Hello, that's kind of an important thing where Rick says he was on the trail, the platform, one of the bridge, and then a bench. And these girls were there for the same hour as he was 1230 to 130. And they never saw him. That's not good for Rick, in my opinion. Hi, Alec, Trev, nice to see you. Ronnie says, on balance, at this stage, it's pretty obvious that this is corruption and conspiracy. Well, what is the conspiracy and the corruption? <laughs> what like they went five and a half years investigated ron logan kagan klein all these other people brian james chadwell that people were saying they were 100 percent convinced it was brian chadwell why were they not doing a conspiracy to falsely charge kagan klein why richard allen and please don't say because like everybody in indiana wanted to the legendary optometrist tony liggett to be elected sheriff Alec, thank you. you. You always leave the nicest comments and 
Thank you for your huge generosity. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh. I don't want to talk, say that, but thank you so much for your nice comments. I do try and help out and give us all a place to discuss our different theories politely, hopefully. But thank you, Alec. I appreciate it. Hi, Shelly. Nice to see you. I just want the guilty to pay and the innocent not to suffer. Mostly just for mostly just justice for Abby and Libby. We love you. Sorry for the poor something show. <laughs> Reliable evidence. The state is one body, prosecutor and law enforcement. Prosecutor is liable for law enforcement's gross negligence when losing early interviews. Okay. How is he responsible then or liable? McClelland started after Ives. Ives was the one who was in charge at that time, as far as I remember. I think he's, Ives quit in late 2017. Stacy feels these are major hysteronics or histrionics because they are worried about the evidence because they know what it is, but they should still get paid. Yes, they uh, this issue of not getting paid for six months is unacceptable and also denying experts where the def uh, prosecution is able to be paying experts in the same matter is not acceptable. Ronnie says Rick's admissions are worthless. Why? If somebody calls his wife and says, I killed Abby and Libby repeatedly, why is it worthless for a jury not to hear that or see it? As far as I know, it's going to be presented at the trial. And Rick's jail cell, or not jail, don't want to misspeak, Rick's prison cell is under 24-hour video, video surveillance, not audio. But... I'm sure McClelland is going to show from April 3rd, how is Rick acting in his cell before he meets with the intern and the private investigator from his defense team? I don't know for sure, or faux show, if Rick made this phone call before or after that meeting, I'm assuming it was after. So was he acting normal, then comes back from this meeting and then acts not normal, like, what is his body language where he before he picks up his tablet to call his wife? Is he reading papers that he just got, freaking out that he just got some evidence that he feels like he could never deny? And so he feels like he has to call his wife and say, I killed Abby and Libby. So I wouldn't say that his admissions are worthless, but it's okay to disagree. I, I agree. I mean, they've... Um, Radar says, if I was the family of Abby and Libby, I'd be screaming, get it done and do it right. I totally agree. It's like the families of Abby and Libby have said very nice things about law enforcement. And I'm not acting like law enforcement has not done, like put in an incredible amount of hours trying to solve this. But it seems like maybe they had to do that because they screwed up so many times. But they, they've held, um, they've shown a lot of restraint in criticizing law enforcement, but I'm sure they're like devastated hearing all this stuff. Human was saying, just jump to the end for once. Uh oh, Girl Scout cookies are here. Cinder makes a good point. Rick should be an exception to a rule of no visitors because he hasn't been convicted. I, I agree. It's like, I don't know why he can't meet with his wife and whatever, his family. I don't know if he has any friends. That's not shady, but I've not really seen anything, anybody stand up for him. Hi, Caricature Contest. All I know is this, really important law enforcement people in Indiana 
think Rick is guilty enough to prosecute, even with all the distractions. They must know case is solid. Yeah, so McClellan has said the case is solid. And even in the Franks memo, when after Holman had his August 2023 deposition, even though he agreed that Rick's DNA was not found at the crime scene, at some exchange in that August 2023 uh, deposition with Baldwin and Rosie, Holman said to them something like, why don't you ask your client? He's the one who killed Abby and Libby. So why is Holman still saying that Rick is the person who killed Abby and Libby, despite certain things pointing towards Rick's innocence? I need a drink. Right. <laughs> USA Libertarian, or being treated like he's guilty for almost two years would be more than enough to make a lot of innocent people suicidal. Well, as I said before, according to Westville, he was suicidal within when he arrived at um, Westville. And I, I just, I find it interesting that people like try and think of like all these excuses why Rick would confess when for like five and a half years, people wondered who is bridge guy. And apparently Rick Allen told his wife, I'm bridge guy. And people are like, no, nah, I'm not ready to have this be resolved. And it's like the confessions, people are saying, oh, it must be because he was having a mental issue and he's having mental issues because of his mistreatment. So wouldn't you think maybe somebody who's guilty and realizes that the next 30 years of their lives, they're going to spend in this cage. Wouldn't that cause somebody to be mentally unstable? In my opinion, yes. So I don't know why some people are totally ignoring the fact that, or not the fact, but the possibility that Rick truly is guilty. And that's why he's telling people he's guilty. And that's why he's acting upset mentally because he's upset knowing that he's going to be found guilty. Yeah, yeah. Would you honestly believe those guards? I guess saying, giving some kind of testimony saying about how Rick's mental health had changed. Well, would you believe defense attorneys who said that Rick was schizophrenic? I would prefer to hear from an expert, including the mental health experts and the two psychiatrists and the one psychologist who talked to Rick on April 14th. I think it's important to know what his state of mind was within 10 days of calling his wife and saying he killed Abby and Libby. I think the jury should have access to that information in order for them to make the proper decision. Was Rick the killer and bridge guy? Radar says, allegedly, people that know the family say Rick's self-harm is not true. Um, stay tuned. We'll, we'll find out what he's done. Well, I don't know if we will find out what he's done to himself at Westville. I've heard a variety of rumors that, I don't know, we'll wait and see if they, they're true. I do know that about a week or two ago, the defense did turn over medical records to McClelland, not mental health. So I don't know what's going to be in those medical records from Westville, not from like his entire life. And I'm not sure if it was for Wabash also. Peter says the that only applies if Rick's confession were not coerced, which he was in his cell and he was the one who picked up the phone to call his wife. And it said that he admitted several times that he killed Abby and Libby. That was the transcript. Oh, not the transcript, but the summary of the call based on McClelland's uh, motion, some motion, whatever. Yes, ESQ is Esquire. Thank you, KT. Wampo says, Rick could have had a mental breakdown and also be the killer. Yeah, I mean, that's a possibility. But I'm also open to it possibly being, I mean, the defense said he's suffered from depression since his 
I think they characterized it since his early days. So I guess since he was a kid, he's struggled with uh, depression. I know that one or two people have left comments under my videos. And one person said, I think she's an emergency room nurse who deals with people who are depressed or something. And she said, some people who suffer from depression do have delusions, but another person who does something similar said, those delusions are never really like somebody admitting to a crime. It's more like a hallucination with like some kind of crazy scenario, not like the truth or um, admitting to a crime. So we'll have to wait till the trial to see what kind of experts present both sides. And I'm sure somebody, somebody is saying, well, the defense doesn't have money for an expert to defend it. So hopefully some, some funding will come for the defense to present whatever. I know they want to present somebody who says being in solitary confinement, like what the mental implications are for that and how it might affect somebody into uh, confessing to a crime that maybe they did not commit. Thank you. Randy says, David Hennessy did all the talking. Pascale Lepas, the defense filing for a speedy trial while apparently not even having their expert witnesses lined up seems reckless. Well, as I said before, well, first of all, they're saying they're totally overwhelmed, which is um, understandable. Have they interviewed the Purdue professor and all these Odinists? If not, what the hell are they waiting for? All right, D.B. Cooper, I, I, or not D.B. Cooper. I know Travis is an attorney. Thank you. Kay says Wabash visiting is online. We had a relative in Wabash facility and set up the visit video visits. Yeah. So I don't know why the defense is not doing as many, um, whatever meetings with Rick as possible. Obviously, it seems like they may want to be in person to show him certain papers. I don't know if they have that ability to show papers and evidence on this video. And I'm sure some people are saying, well, the state or McClelland is going to get access to this. I'm busy, don't you know? Sorry. <laughs> Aren't you watching? Sorry, I'm kind of busy. There's like 552 people watching me right now. Hi, everybody. What, <laughs> what are we at? We're at one hour and 12 minutes. I usually go for like an hour, or two hours and 59 minutes. Cinder, Rick is not all of a sudden schizophrenic at his age either. Yeah, some people say for males, usually they um, become schizophrenic or start showing itself in their 20s. And Rick was 50 years old last year. And it seems like he's not suffering schizophrenic traits as of now. So some people say it's not really something that comes and goes like that. Kathleen says, a person who sits with a distressed person to prevent suicide or self-harm is called a safety attendant in my place of employment. Yeah, I forget what they were. It was something different, but I don't know that it's important, but thank you for sharing your experience. Randy Graff says, David Hennessy does have a hearing problem. I guess somebody said that Gull said, do you need a hearing assistance device or something? KT says, Rick may or may not be guilty, but Carroll County, the Indiana State Police, Indiana courts were not prepared to be fully transparent, worrisome in relation to past cases. Yaya says, we don't know when BH clocked out. Well, according to the Franks memo, the human resources manager where he worked said he clocked out at 2.45. I'm not saying you're a conspiracy theorist, yeah, yeah. But I discussed this in my seven hour Frank's memo video. If you worked with BH, 
wouldn't you care that you worked with like a double child murderer who somehow like fudged his t clocking out time? The, re the reward was like $325,000. You really think like somebody he works with is like, oh, I love BH so much. I want to continue working with him. I want him to get away with two child murderers, uh, murdering two kids. And I don't want $325,000. I mean, you can disagree, but in my opinion, if the human resource resources manager where he works says he clocked out at 245 and they have video of his car there, I, I don't think he was bridge guy, at least. I mean, I've seen photos of his Facebook around that time and he had like a long beard, which bridge guy does not have. So where are all these Odinists around the crime scene? I have not seen any proof that any of these guys were there from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Do you have any proof? Because the defense is saying they have significant evidence that BH and PW were involved in the murders of Abby and Libby. And they said Rick is not connected to them. So he therefore is not involved in the murders, which I don't think that sentence really adds up to me. Al says, good grief, the timeline and flow is solid. I agree, comparing like the noon to 1.30 timeline of Rick, which I said does not really add up to me, the 1.30 to 4 p.m. timeline does seem to add up, but there's still certain things that point towards Rick being innocent. So I'm just hoping some kind of more conclusive evidence will be presented at trial. Hi, Navalis True Crime. Yeah, Ron Logan and his bish show up in live chats occasionally. Oh my gosh, I don't think so. I wouldn't do it for $15 an hour. Um, <laughs> I, make, I used to make more than that to correct other people's errors. KT, if Indiana is doing this stuff to Rick, guilty or innocent, who knows what's really happening behind the scenes in past cases? Yeah, I just don't understand some of these procedures that are going on in Indiana and why some people are not following them at all levels of government. Not D.B. Cooper. It's problematic to me that so many people think it's either the Odinus did it or Rick did it. If you say the investigation was incompetent, it means you believe Odinus did a ritual murder. I would say one of my biggest concerns is if Rick did not do it and the Odinus did not do it, that means this case is totally cold. McClelland and Holman are saying that it's not and that they truly believe that Rick is the, the, the only killer. I know that at some point in whatever, November 22nd, 2022, McClelland said there could be other actors. And I know a lot of us wondered, well, does that mean somebody else was at the crime scene or did somebody help Rick like hide this? Like maybe his wife knew and she did not come forward or something like that. It's now almost a year and a half after Rick was arrested and obviously nobody else has been arrested. So was that other actor comment, meaning that they already knew, which probably they did, that Rick's DNA did not match the crime scene. So they thought maybe somebody else was there, but at what point um, are they going to be arresting somebody else? Or did they possibly recently, well, it's been two months since they upgraded Rick's uh, four new charge, charge to say he is the killer. So is there some kind of DNA evidence that showed maybe a friend of Abby and Libby that was their DNA, maybe on a sweatshirt or something like that? I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. Humanimal says BH would be on the Hoosier Harvest Store video if he drove. Uh -oh. She writes on her phone. I can't understand it. <laughs> BH would be on the Hoosier Harvest Store video if he drove, if he drive, do. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's something like that. What? <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, I'm interested to know. Rick said in October 13th, 2022, he told Liggett. 
I was there noon to 1.30 and I parked next to an old building, which it's C the CPS building. Did they ask him which route he took? Did he say he took like the long way? There's like three different ways essentially to get from Rick's house to whatever CPS. So if he said he took the long way instead of going through town or the Hoosier Heartland Highway, he would have had to pass Hoosier Harvest Store, which captured at least five other vehicles that were referenced in the CP, uh, PCA. So is there no car resembling Rick's around noon confirming his timeline? Also, are there no three girls who saw Rick? Rick said he passed three girls when he arrived around noon near the start of the trail. Law enforcement knows if there were or were not three girls at that time. So if Rick in October 2022 says to Liggett, yeah, I got there at noon and I passed three girls and Liggett knows there were not three girls there, then obviously that's part of the reason that he was arrested. Even if his um, DNA isn't at the crime scene, if there's no three girls at noon and no car showing that he's driving there, if that's the route he took, then obviously that's not good. Court was in recess, so they're going late. Are they going to order a Taco Bell? Hi, Sidonia. This is a good point. This case needs a babysitter of sorts. I don't understand how both sides can be so incompetent and no one steps in. I've said quite a few times, like, what has law enforcement or Doug Carter done to investigate this investigation to see all these mistakes and how they can learn from them? Doug, I know you're watching. I'm kidding. He better not be. Peppermint, he said he was there, though. Well, there's a discrepancy from the first interview in two, February 2017, where the conservation officer wrote down that Rick was there 1.30 to 3.30, which obviously would add up to a guilty timeline, but in October of last year, no, two years ago, 2022, he told Liggett he was there noon to 1.30, which that is obviously on video. Hopefully that doesn't get missing, but the 2017 one is not on audio. The conservation officer said he thought he recorded all these on audio, every interview he did related to the case, but he can't find it. Again, that's another thing that's missing. I don't know. Somebody made a good point. If Rick truly did call the police to say I was there on the trails and they said, okay, well, go to the gross grocery store to meet this conservation officer. Did whoever took that first phone call from Rick write down, okay, what time were you there? So is that going to be in evidence at some point? I've not seen anything in any of the prosecution's filings to say they have a log of Rick's first phone call. And did he say the later timeline or the earlier timeline? Cinder says, I think showing BH and PW's text and social media activity, activity during the time of the crime could help prove they were not involved. They both looked to be on it a lot. They aren't going to be at a murder seen texting casually or posting online just to establish an alibi. Well, this was brought up recently by the defense saying this might've been part of the motion to dismiss the entire case that they're apparently talking about now. The defense said they found like a search warrant for AT&T, which is a phone company, a cell phone company in America for people who are not in America, but they were, there, there were only like drafts for information to get the cell phone data for BH and PW. It does not seem like law enforcement submitted to get that data to either show what their true activity was, Cinder, which is just another mistake, as far as we know, unless they uh, the defense only saw a search warrant, but actually the prosecution had not turned over the actual data or the defense has said there's so much data, they sometimes miss stuff.
Hi, goat dog. They casually, or sorry, they usually call inmates with extra privileges trustees. Yeah, that's still not the same word I'm thinking of. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but thank you, goat dog. Peter says, jury members are not going to get all of these shenanigans included, included by the state. It's never the whole truth with a variety of emojis, including a clown. Hi, Lala. Rule of thumb, if your son ever has to supply you with an alibi for not committing a murder, then you might want to review your parenting skills. Well, I think PW was a military veteran. He That's how he, I think he met P, uh, BH because they were in Afghanistan together. Um, and I don't know if uh, PW had some kind of disability or something where he was not working. And as I said before, he had four children who I guess were all off from Delphi school system the same day as the murders. So if a child's going to say that my dad was whatever babysitting me or, or parents aren't supposed to babysit children. <laughs> I know some people say like the dad complains that he has to babysit when it's like, it's your child. It's not considered babysitting. I don't know, Lala, we'll have to wait and see who says what at the trial. Lucky Lou, Baldwin and Rosie both have 20 plus years and neither have had any discipline actions filed against them. Yeah, I don't know what uh, Gull is going to do. If she's going to find them, do nothing. Apparently, if it's criminal contempt, she could put them in jail. But obviously, obviously, well, it seems unlikely that she would do that. I think that Hennessy made some good points in his filings about why it does not add up that um, Baldwin and Rosie should be punished. We're at about the halfway point, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to do a quick one. Maybe I'll stop in a half hour. Yeah, I'm probably going to stop in like 30 minutes. Unless we're waiting for the motion to dismiss to be decided on. Kevin makes a good point. The conservation officer could have ended this mad madness early on by simply remembering that he talked to Richard Allen, who put himself on the bridge the day of the crime at the time of the crime. So why did the conservation officer never follow up with Liggett or law enforcement saying, what did you guys ever do with that guy I interviewed at the grocery store who said he was there until 3.30? Somebody do a spreadsheet on errors by law enforcement. Hi, Cold Truth. McClelland used the ex parte filings in his own filing for Pete's sake. He should have immediately closed it. Yeah, he, like the next day, I guess Rosie was like, or actually the same day probably, Rosie emailed Gull, I guess, complaining. And the next day, McClelland withdrew his request to get Rick's mental health records. But then he, he filed it again, I think a few days ago, his fourth request for Met, uh, mental health records, because I guess we know that in the October 19th hearing or whatever, in the behind the scenes drama, Gull said to Mick, uh, Baldwin and Rosie, if you continue to bring up Rick's mental health issues or just his mental health, I'm going to allow the prosecution access to his mental health um, records to rebut whatever you guys are going to say. 
So she has not decided on that, as far as I know, the mental health records going to McClelland. Shelley says, shady and corrupt, no excuses. All law enforcement involved from day one to the clown court, court document paper fights over the internet, that poor clerk. Let's get back to what matters, Abby and Libby. Yeah, hopefully in two months, this is all going to be resolved, although my hopes are not up. Hi, Jordan. Didn't law enforcement circle back to Rick due to a misplaced tip or interview? I've never heard of an agency losing this much evidence. We don't know the exact story as to why the conservation officer gave, I don't, I don't know what happened with this tip. It was, it was not lost. It's in the, o, the FBI Orion system as the 74th tip out of thousands of tips. So why was it never properly followed up on? I've heard a few rumors that kind of contradict each other, so I don't want to share them, but it's a crazy point, Jordan. It's like, how did this go overlooked for so long? Even for like Holman said in various interviews, my biggest fear or something is like, we miss something, so we go back and we check. But like, why at the f whatever first year anniversary, second year, why were they not going back to the FBI Orion system and being like, okay, let's look at the first 1,000 tips out of these 30,000 to 70,000 tips we've gotten. And we don't know why they went back um, in September of 2022. The PCA just said, while reviewing prior tips they came across whatever rick's original interview on september 21st Goat dog. There's so much reasonable doubt now. The prosecution has an Ever Everest, Mount Everest level mountain to overcome to convict Rick. If they throw out the confessions, they have scant evidence to actually use. Well, we don't know that for sure. What if there's car data showing Rick parked there from 1.30 to 3.30 or 1.30 to 4? I think there's a lot of stuff that they can also pre present that show Rick is guilty. As, as I said before, if there were never three girls on the trails at noon that Rick says he passed, then as a member of the jury, how are you going to react to that? I mean, it doesn't look good for Rick. Mary is going to make her YouTube name random freak. Kevin, where? Oh, uh, yeah. So the Ron Logan PCA or search warrant, or whatever said a sock and underwear were missing from the crime scene. So if those were found at Rick's house on October 13th, then Kevin is saying case over. Also, it seems like in the Frank's memo, it said that DNA, Rick's DNA was not found at the crime scene, but we don't know if Libby and Abby's DNA was found in Rick's car or his shed or anything like that, or his clothing. So we'll have to wait and see. Good morning, Lux. Thistle's last stand. Did Rick come forward about being on the bridge before the release of Bridge Guy on the phone video or whatever the screenshot? We don't know yet. As I was just saying, Rick's tip was in the FBI Orion system as number 74. The screenshot from Libby's video was released the night of February 15th, but in the Frank's memo, I saw that the 48th tip, I think the 48th tip, was entered into FBI Orion based on a phone call that came in on February 16th at 7.21 p.m., which would maybe indicate that Rick talked to the conservation officer after February 16th. However, 
it may have taken a few days for the FBI Orion system to be set up. So I'm wondering if the conservation officer wrote down on a, it said that he was scribbling notes on a piece of paper. So did he put that in some kind of, some kind of bin at Carroll County Sheriff's office waiting for the FBI Orion system to be set up? And then somebody just like somebody else just took paper by paper and started inputting it. Some people say, how did the conservation officer enter this into FBI Orion system, which I don't know that he had access to it. There's obviously this other mistake by law enforcement, whoever entered it into FBI Orion system wrote Richard Allen Whiteman, whereas Whiteman is the street name, which I guess in my opinion, the conservation officer wrote his name, Richard Allen says, where do you live? And he said on Whiteman drive or whatever it's called. And then he writes Whiteman and whoever picks up the paper to enter it into the database a few days later or whatever, falsely assumes that Allen was his middle name and Whiteman was his last name, but still having the wrong last name, that should not have prevented them from following up with Rick. They had his, at least his IMEI phone number or whatever from his phone. I don't know. Shiraz, sorry if I mispronounced your names. Is it just me or does it seem like maybe someone needs to look at the credentials of a few law schools some of these folks went to? That's a good point. Looper, didn't Rick confess multiple times to his wife and mother on recorded jail calls? Well, you're triggering people. Um, there's been a few rumors on the June 15th hearing, Rosie started saying something like incriminating statements, non-incriminating statements, confessions, non-confessions. We'll deal with that at the trial. So yeah, in a certain filing, McClellan said that Rick has confessed multiple times to his wife and mom. And yes, those are recorded and people say, those are allowed to be presented to the jury. So some people say that he only confessed because or whatever made these admissions because he's so upset from for being in a whatever solitary confinement, which the defense said he was fine mentally for the first five months of solitary confinement. So why all of a sudden on April 3rd, did he lose his mind and it caused him to call his wife and mother and say, I'm a double child murderer. Babu's Frick, I think it comes down to incompetence versus con corruption. Before Alan was arrested, it was all incompetence on social media. Then it wasn't sexy enough, so corruption has to be the answer. Well, I mean, I think there can be incompetence and corruption, and also Rick is bridge guy and the killer. Hi, Caroline's catastrophe. This is going to be Carroll County catastrophe. Um, it's not funny, actually. How are the first interviews and later interviews just gone? Sorry, but um, yeah, it's a catastrophe. Radar says, or AKA Radar, ISP's evidence protocol is that it has to be filed and secured within 72 hours. ISP Detective Harper found some of the evidence for defense that Nick claims is lost. Right, I, I don't know some of that. I'm not, I'm not aware of some of that stuff you're talking about. Chris, hi Chris, four girls, uh, you mean three girls? No, I mean four. Well, there's two different groups in the, P the PCA against Rick. There were four girls who were leaving around one thirty. They took a photo of two of these girls on bench number two at one twenty six. It's a one twenty six timestamp. 
So it was a group of four girls. Two of them were a younger sister and older sister. In the PCA, they only included three girls' testimony because the younger sister did not get a good look at Bridge Guy as he passed them around 1.30. But Rick Allen says he got there at noon and he passed three girls in the same exact area as these three girls that they passed Bridge Guy 90 minutes later. So there's supposedly a group of three girls and a group of four girls, one at noon and one who should have arrived by 1.30, or sorry, 1230. Because these four girls who took this 126 p.m. photo of bench two, also one of them took a photo of the high bridge at 1243 p.m. And as I said in my video, like how did Rick not see these four girls? In order to take a photo of high bridge at 1243, these four girls would have had to arrived at the start of the trail around 1230. Rick said he arrived at noon, passed three girls, went to High Bridge, was on, a, was on platform one, and then went back and sat on a bench. There are six benches. How do these four girls from 1230 to 130 pass all six benches on their way to the High Bridge? Take a photo of the bridge where Rick would have been at least by 1220, like 23 minutes before this photo. Rick's not in the photo at 1243, apparently. So one of my issues wondering is rick truly guilty or not is how do these girls in 60 minutes between 12 30 and 1 30 when rick said he was also there not see rick how is the defense going to explain that away looper says if rick has no alibi the ballistic evidence holds up and the confessions aren't persuasively explained, Alan is toast. Well, they're going to have to convince 12 jurors. I saw some blog post on the criminal defense team, which is Baldwin's team, uh, law firm. And he says that Hennessy, David Hennessy, is helping or has been helping for years the criminal defense team come up with strategies to pick jurors to um, in whatever, get probable, um, whatever, to cause doubt against people being found guilty. So stay tuned to see who's going to be on the jury. Babu's Frick says, what's the conspiracy? Who benefits? it would have been so easy to pin it on Ron Logan. Well, yeah, we know police moved on from Ron Logan seven years ago. Radar says, how is it they lost the 70 days from the beginning, yet they were able to find Ricks? Well, Ricks, unfortunately, wasn't recorded and if it was that would just be another piece of drama that they overrode it caroline's catastrophe maybe rick's bullet well we don't know it was rick's bullet the prosecutor saying it was according to Indiana State Police analysis, which is also considered subjective and not exact. Maybe his bullet was around, but not as close to the bodies as we think, if he frequently walked the trails. Well, the issue is that um, in reports, it said it was found two feet from Libby's body. And also where they were found is not the trail. It's And Richard Allen was asked on October 26th when he came back for his second interview, did you ever go on Ron Logan's property? And Rick said no. And they also asked him, do you ever let anybody borrow your gun? And he said no. So that's why police think it is his unspent round that was found two feet from the girl's dead bodies. Hi, Salty Beach. Yeah, the conspiracy angle doesn't fit to me. I know it's like, all we're doing is really talking about law enforcement incompetence, yet 
they're competent enough to do a grant conspiracy against the guy who works at Delphi CVS? USA Libertarian, sometimes a conspiracy is to cover up incompetence, in fact, usually. Well, why would they just randomly arrest Rick, which has shown how incompetent they were? Wouldn't they not want to reveal their incompetence and then never arrest anybody? I mean, that's just the thought that came to my mind that, then. Sorry. Hi, Katja. Or Katya. Do you think Rick will speak at the trial? Hell no. I'm so eagerly waiting to hear his voice. I've suggested previously that if I was innocent and falsely accused of murdering two kids, there's no way I would not get on the stand and stand up for myself. But people say that's not how it works. But for me, it would. I, I, I would, whatever. There's no way I would not defend myself. But people, no, are not, nobody's expecting Rick to stand up for himself and let people hear his voice compared to bridge guys. But we, we're definitely going to hear his voice because hopefully law enforcement did not lose the recordings of October 13th and 26th where they had him in whatever interview rooms asking him in, uh, whatever questions about what happened. I'm just looking for a comments we haven't really discussed. Is there any update on um, how far behind am I? Oh my God, I'm 40 minutes behind. <laughs> oh, let me scroll over a bunch of stuff. I'm probably going to scroll over what happened. Uh, all right, here we go. Katie, hi, Katie. Court has ended officially, I've heard. I'm just looking to see if there's, I'm you all, I'm like the last person to know. Huh. USA Libertarian, does someone tell you the wording and context of the confessions? It's in McClelland wrote in a document that they had it transcribed and it says, Rick admits several times that he killed Abby and Libby. I don't know how diff obviously there's been some incompet incompetence, but how, I mean, is it really going to come out that he said something generic that McClelland falsely represented is Rick saying repeatedly, I killed Abby and Libby, and then Rick's wife abruptly hangs up? He's going to present this at the trial. Hi, Marianne. No, the prosecution has not leaked what is said on these quote unquote confessions. Looper, no DNA at a brutal crime scene seems odd, but I don't know the stats on that. Yeah, neither do I. But I mean, it seems to me like whoever did this, whoever Bridge Guy was, planned something because there's items in his jacket that are just like bulging out. He had a gun and obviously a knife. So did he also plan to bring gloves in case the opportunity opportunity presented itself? We know that Bridge Guy has something on his head like covering his hair on his head. So he's wearing a long sleeve jacket. So it's not like his hair would have easily fallen out at the crime scene. So if all of his body is almost totally covered up, including if he put gloves on, how likely is it that any kind of DNA would have transferred? I do not know the answer. Hi, Lauren. I really disagree with putting someone in a prison, not a jail, 
before being convicted. Well, I still have yet to hear anybody give like the perfect solution where Rick should be until trial. Like, do you really think, and I'm not saying you specifically, Lauren, like people think like Rick is going to go to Carroll County Jail and like hang out with people who are arrested for meth and drunk driving and all these other charges. And he's going to be making friends with meth heads and like because he's going to become so happy. Or is the reality that every time he comes out of a cell, people are going to be harassing him saying, Hey, you're that guy who killed two girls. Will anybody he's five foot four to five foot six. Is he really going to be able to defend himself if somebody tries to beat him up? So either he's in solitary uh, one jail cell alone at a county jail or a jail cell alone in prison. I just don't know what the perfect solution is. Like, feel free to write the perfect solution in the comments. Sorry. Ronnie says the defense would like mental health experts in, but the biased judge refused funding. No, I think they said they were, were able to talk to at least uh, one person. Marianne says, Rick's statement to attorneys indicated fear for safety of wife and daughter. No, it's not. That's a, that's a lie by the defense. I'm, I'm surprised at some people. I'm not saying you, Marianne, but it's not true. That was, I think, page 15 of or maybe, you know, it's either page 15 or 22 of the Frank's memo. The defense was trying to say that Rick could not have, like, a private conversation with Ball and Rosie because the Odinus guards were videotaping Rick's mouth. And they, the defense came up with a fake quote that said essentially, so Rick would not feel comfortable to say something like, quote, the guards are threatening to kill my family if I do not call my wife and say, I killed those girls, end quote. So that was a totally fake quote. And it was only in the footnote below that the Walden and Rosie were like, oh, yeah, just to be clear, Rick never said that. So I know that there were other, um, well, first of all, to me, the end of that fake quote is the most interesting, where it said, Walden and Rosie wrote, I killed those girls. So it seemed to me like maybe that is a true phrase that Rick said to his wife, and Walden and Rosie felt like they needed to come up with something to take attention away and explain that away. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see and hear what he said to his wife. And also, like, what was his voice sounding like? Was he scared and crying? Or was he truly, like, sounding like he lost his mind? And as I said before, like, ob it seems obvious to me that McClelland would sync up the video from Rick's jail cell to that audio phone call. How's his body language going to be? What happens when his wife abruptly hangs up? We know that Rick broke his tablet. Did he throw it down the ground at some point after his wife hung up? Brandy says, bullet at the crime scene. He put himself on the bridge, wearing the clothes that bridge guy wore. Admitted to his wife. I feel like that accounts for something. I, I agree, but there's also some things that point to possible possible innocence. Ronnie, Rick was threatened and coerced when he describes how he did it. Then I'll believe him. Well, is the video going to show from Rick Sell as he calls his wife on April 3rd that the guards are outside? As I just said, that was a totally fake quote that the defense made up. Miku's headphones. 
Oh, so the Odinist EF admitting admitting to doing it means nothing, but there's no DNA or anything linking Rick other than the BS junk science bullet, and he's clearly guilty. Make it make sense. Yeah, so this EF guy apparently confessed to his two sisters, which I agree, that's definitely suspicious. One of the sisters said, whatever, he was rambling and incoherent. And one of the law enforcement officers said, he had like the mental capacity of a seven or eight year old. So does EF have, have a history of making similar, whatever, I don't want to say crazy statements, but let's just say crazy statements. We know that that night of February 13th, when the girls were still missing and not found, it was on the Indiana state 11 PM news. So EF could have seen that this girl, Abigail Williams was missing. Cause I guess he said, he saw some girl Abigail on a bridge and she was being annoying or something like that. All right, let me go see if we're got any more information, any updates. Hi, Ruckus. There won't be a trial in May. Why? What's going to happen? <laughs> uh, give me one second. Let me see if I can. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm behind, obviously. We're at 156. I'll go for another like 15 minutes or so. Sorry, I'm just looking to see if there's any updates or some other topic we have not discussed yet. Hi, Todd, I know you think that Rick is guilty. What is it that you believe shows Rick is innocent? Well, no DNA being found at the crime scene. The defense listed a um, seven total items that show or like point to Rick being innocent. I'm just waiting for the trial to hear all the evidence and whatever the defense says to combat it. Yeah, yeah. The defense memo never said that BH had definitely clocked out. That's insane. Bye. Well, I read the 136 pages and according to what I remember, it did. So, bye. <laughs> uh. Alex says, it's always been strange to me that Rick randomly went on a walk that day, taking knife and gun with him just in case he'd run into one or more girls who he could attack, et cetera. Well, we still don't know if he truly was bridge guy or not. I do wonder if police asked him, did you take your gun and a knife to the trail that day? And wh whatever he said, the defense has said that Rick um, often went to the trails. So as people are saying, we don't know like what kind of evidence, if like the bullet is the only thing, I don't think that's the only thing. What if law enforcement has Rick's um, car data from the previous year or two, like before he was arrested, and it shows that he never went to the trails after? Why would somebody who often went to the trails never go back? I don't know that that's going to show, but if it's true, that doesn't look good for Rick. Also, we know that the McCain brothers often went to the trail. So are they going to testify? Yes, I used to see Rick there a lot. But after the murders, I never saw him. So why would somebody stop going? That's potential evidence that will make Rick look uh, guilty.
I don't know. Maybe they'll say the opposite and that they often saw him there. Peter, did you ever confirm any of the other ritual killings specific to Odinus? Genuine questions I've heard verified of at least three in the area. I have never heard of any other Odinus sacrifices of humans or white girls in Indiana, other than the supposed, whatever, murder, ritualistic sacrifice of Abby and Libby, which Rick's temporary attorney Labrado gave an interview two months ago saying he believes at least one of the girls was sacrificed. So what has he seen that makes him think that? Looper, did they find any DNA at the scene not belonging to the victims? Yes, it's been said that there is DNA evidence, but obviously for at least five and a half years before Rick was arrested, none of that DNA was able was able to match up to a suspect. And it's been said that Rick's DNA did not match the crime scene. Send some to me, Brandy. Hi, Fair Maiden wins. Was Rick looking at his stocks? Cause that's his story. That will be evidence for one side or the other team. That's a good point because like two weeks ago, there was this uh, filing about geofencing data. And geofencing is where like law enforcement can show like on a map, they'll do like a, not, a, it doesn't have to be a rectangle, but they'll select an area, say we want for a certain date and time to know like whose phones were in this area. So it seems like law enforcement may did this for, I don't know what part of the crime scene. Obviously the crime started at the end of the bridge and the defense recently said there were three phone numbers in the crime within 60 to 100 yards of the crime scene around the time of the murders that do not were not registered to Richard Allen. So some people are saying, well, if the end of the bridge is considered the crime scene, we know that there was like up to five people on the high bridge between around three to four, four o'clock. So if Rick said to the conservation officer in 2017, I was looking at stock my a stock ticker on my phone, so I may have passed people and not seen them. What, what does Rick's phone data show where he's accessing stock information? I know some people are saying there might be an app that shows fish being stocked in Deer Creek, but either way, he would have had to have a uh, internet connection on his phone. So stay tuned for that data. I'm still 40 minutes behind. Sorry. Hi, rescue all the dogs. We, we are leaving the hearings now. All right. What did they say? I'm just looking to see if there's an update. I'm sure you guys have all seen it though. If I'm not going to get to it, I'm sure you guys are going to find out from another source. So let me just highlight your comments and we'll go for another like 15 minutes. Hi, love to hunt. If Doolin recorded statements, then why didn't he turn those over right when they were finished interviewing people? No proper chain of custody for the interviews either. Why record anything, Doolin? That's a good point. So he said he thought he recorded everybody on audio, but he can't find Rick. So I'm, I think I've made this point previously. Like if somebody's interviewing 
potential witnesses, why is he not going to the command center and saying, okay, here's five interviews that I just did? Like, what's this procedure for law enforcement to interview and collect evidence and retain it? It's not working, Indiana. Sorry. Oh. Hi, F. Zappa. Todd says, witness four saw Rick on platform one dressed as bridge guy. Well, she said she saw a 20 year old or to early thirties. Rick said he was on platform one in jeans and a blue, or he said black jacket. Witness four is able to describe his face, but no, she didn't describe Rick though. That means Rick was looking at witness four on a sunny day. Rick saw witness four proves 130 to 330. I don't know about that, Todd. If it turns out that Rick was, he arrived at 1.30, if there's some kind of video, obviously we know law enforcement says at 1.27 PM, Hoosier Harvestor, Harvestor video captured a car that appears to match Rick's car heading towards CPS. So time will tell if that car truly does match Rick's car. If so, and he arrived at 1.30, it does add up to the timeline, as I was saying before, the 1.30 to 3.30 or 4. Rick parks the CPS around 1.29, 1.30, sees these four girls around 1.30 to 1.35, goes to platform one, is seen by witness four. She turns around, Abby and Libby, yeah. To me, that would make makes more sense compared to Rick saying he was there noon to 1.30 and these four girls not seeing him 12.30 to 1.30. Hi, Cryptex. Hi, Chemtralia and the fucking Skya. It will be so interesting to hear all the evidence on both sides and get a complete picture. I agree. That's what I'm waiting for. But then we all know there's the defense's version, the prosecution's version, and the truth. All I'm hoping for is the truth to be presented to the jury and they make the correct decision. Hi, Sub Rosa. The Ron Logan did it crew is even worse than the Rick Allen fan club and the satanic panic defense team put together. Do people still think Ron Logan did it after seven years, the police moved on? Hi, Taylor. I don't trust anything this defense team says. Yeah, we have a lot of diff different opinions on both sides here. Just taking their courtroom, their court documents as fact is a mistake. Let's get this to trial and let the facts of the case speak. I Totally agree, at least to the second uh, sentence. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Paul says bridge guy was clearly six foot at least. Richard Allen is much shorter. I don't know about that. I know some people have done various tests, but if I look at the bridge guy video, I think his body type is shorter. And also Rick's feet and bridge guy's feet are both small in my opinion we'll see the girls who passed bridge guy at 1 30 as he arrived and they left i know one of the girls said he was not taller than 5 10. another one said she her head or whatever came up to his shoulder but there was another one who said that he was short so is six foot to me is not short these witness testimony is going to be crazy and conflicting at the trial. Peter says, what if the Odinists really coerced Rick into confessing? I, I really don't buy this conspiracy theory that these two guards at Westville who are Odinists, I'm not just disputing that, like they're involved in some big conspiracy with these five or six other Odinists to try and get Rick to confess. 
I have not seen any evidence presented that the two Odinist guards at Westville were friends with these six Odinists who are being accused by law enforcement and the defense. High peace train. I've never heard law enforcement saying that there is no DNA. I have heard them say that there is DNA. Yes, that's correct. When the defense puts information in their court documents, it is not always true. Well, the defense said that even Holman admitted in his August 2023 deposition that Rick's DNA was not a match to the crime scene. Todd says, Witness four is 50 feet away, which I agree. I would be more prone to listen to the testimony of three girls who passed within a few feet than one person 50 feet away. Reasonable that she was not able to precisely, to be precisely accurate with face description or hair. Also a hat could resemble shape and texture of hair and in bright sunlight. I do agree with that possibility. Hi, Missy Elliott. I have a question about the bullet. How did they connect it to him? They say it was a spent round from a gun that matches him, but what made them even think to test it against his gun? So there's been various rumors about when this unspent round was found. And by unspent round, it means like on a handgun, if you pull the top back, it'll like pull up a round and sometimes it'll pop out. So they found an unspent round, which means it was not fired out of a gun. They found it within two feet of Libby's body. Some people say it was not found for a few weeks. I've heard it was found the day Abby and Libby's bodies were found. So apparently they tested another local handgun that matched a six hour handgun of the guy who lives at the end of the private drive. And Indiana State Police said it did not match the crime scene. So when they finally looked back at Rick again in October, 2022, they did the October 13th search warrant and got his handgun, sent it to Indiana State Police. And the analyst said, yes, this gun belonging to Richard Allen does seem to match the test. So they took bullet or whatever, um, cartridges or rounds. And they, again, they, they tested by pulling back the top of the gun as they kind of think maybe he did that to intimidate Abby and Libby. And so they think that it does match Richard Allen's uh, gun. The defense is going to have somebody say it's not valid science. Sorry if I did not explain that correctly. All right, let me skip over a bunch more. My contacts are bothering me, so I'm gonna have to stop pretty soon. Missy Elliott again, I hope we can hear those recordings at trial. There is no way those should go missing like the other evidence, at least I hope. Every phone call is recorded every time. I'm so curious about that, yes. What kind of information will the prosecution present based on not just Rick's phone calls at while in prison, but his other actions. Hi, Miranda. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Don't worry. I won't. Hi, Reeker. Have you watched the two interviews with PW? I watched one of them on the Sleuth Intuition channel, and I found him to be fairly credible, or more than fairly credible. I, I don't think he's involved. Feel free to disagree. But why have police not 
arrested him or BH or any of the other Odinists. It seems like they last August when the defense made it aware, made the prosecution and law enforcement aware that they're follow, they were following up on the prior investigation of Click, Ferency, and Murphy, who were these three law enforcement officers who looked into these Odinists back in, I don't know, 2017 to 2020 at least. It seems like Indiana State Police, again, within the past six months, have looked into all these Odinists and re-interviewed them and, I guess, investigated them even further, but obviously none of them have been arrested. Hi, FJ. Just curious, what made you decide to cover this case? Well, <laughs> I wasn't looking to cover it. I've been de decent at like finding information on the internet that some people have not been able to find. So February, I'll say this in 30 seconds. On February 1st, 2021, in Pennsylvania, there was a big snowstorm and some neighbors, like were a married couple, were throwing their snow on the driveway of the guy across the street. So the guy came out, they started arguing, and the guy shot them both dead because they argued over snow. He goes inside and commits suicide when he realized, um, I just committed murder because of snow. So that was February 1st, and around February 10th, 2021, I read online that people were still talking about this case, and I was like, why are they talking about it since it was resolved, like everybody's dead? And people said they could not find a picture of the guy who killed himself and long story short i found a picture within a few hours so a few days later it was the four year anniversary of delphi and i said well let me look into this case to see if i can find anything i know that was stupid and naive but so over two and a half months i became obsessed with delphi and then i took like 80 pages of notes i had all these different files that i saved trying to figure out anything that nobody else had been able to whatever find bridge guy and after two and a half months, I was like, well, I don't want to just delete all my files. And since I had a YouTube channel, I said, I've not seen any video that's kind of like really comprehensive. So I ended up making a two hour video and here we are. <laughs> I'm just glad an arrest happened. I'm just hoping for a conviction if Rick truly is guilty. So justice for Abby and Libby and their families can finally happen. But I'm waiting for the trial to see if it's truly Rick or not. Um, we're at two hours and 17 minutes. I'll go to 2.30. Hi, Red Sauce. I'm so ready for everyone to see the evidence during trial. So hopefully some people can shake their conspiracies and come back to reality. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just want to see what the evidence is. And I'm hoping it's enough either way for guilty or innocent. Living vicariously in high definition says, I think the plan was always to do this. Sadly, he covered his face for everyone else but not as he approached the girls, came prepared with a gun and knife. Yeah, I don't know if it is Rick. How did he get to this point in his life where he works at the CVS in this small town, thinking that he could do any kind of crime against two girls and get away with it, with, which obviously, if he is bridge guy, he got away for five and a half years. And if he never came forward, would this case be forever unsolved? Hi, Cecil Hotel. Hi, Kay. Have you ever seen the analysis done of Bridge Guy by image analysis and detection? No, I don't think so. Hi, Cryptex. Sergeant Riley said Bridge Guy did not have blue eyes. So why would Rick's wife suspect that her husband was Bridge Guy if his eyes are not blue? 
Yeah, I don't know which witness which witness said bridge guy did not have blue eyes. I'm oh, sorry. So yeah, I guess Rick's eyes are blue. I don't know. I forget. <laughs> Because the only people who got close enough to see Bridge Guy were these four girls, and obviously the youngest one seems to not have looked at him at all. I'm not frozen. I'm just looking for some final comments. Hi, PK Nib. You are fair and balanced. Well, some people disagree, but I've never said I thought Rick was bridge, or I know Rich, Rick was bridge guy or the killer. I'm waiting for all the evidence. Cer certain things point to innocence and some point to guilt. But it seems like because I don't say Rick is innocent, some people are triggered. Missy says, one thing I find interesting, and correct me if I'm wrong, but none of the eyewitnesses mentioned a hat in their statements. The four girls who passed him, one of them said, well, they said his head was covered with a hood. I don't think it was in the PCA, but one of these girls talked to some guy who's like an online sleuth, and she said Bridge Guy was wearing a short or a small hat. It was like a painter's hat that says like a shorter bill than a, a baseball hat. And I noticed in Rick, the items taken from Rick's house, there was a short billed hat. So I'm not saying that it was what Bridge Guy was wearing, but maybe it was. Fair Maiden wins. Bridge Guy's jeans are jumbled at the bottom. No one buys jeans that long for themselves. Yeah, some people said like a short guy would wear jeans that are like more for a waist size for someone who's taller. That's why they were bunched up at the bottom. And Rick has khakis um, like that are bunched up at the bottom also. I'm not saying that makes him guilty, but we'll see more information at the trial, I guess. Peter Estrada, did the Odinus order Rick to destroy his pad? Uh, you mean the tablet? C matey can go round and round. All these things are plausible. Probably more than a few are true. Peter likes to use the clown emoji. Hi, Danielle. The prosecution has to prove Rick guilty. He does not have to prove he's innocent. Seriously, legal basics. Cryptex, EF having a mental capacity of a seven-year-old is not an excuse to disregard his statement. That should be revisited. Well, hope, what did law enforcement do to move on from EF as a suspect? EF posted on Facebook after the Frank's memo came out, accusing him of being there at the killings, obviously based on his um, supposed statements to his sisters. He said that he did not drive. So how did he get to the crime scene from two hours away? In his Facebook post, he said, what did I do? Take a turtle? That's what he said. <laughs> so what evidence shows that these Odinists were even in Delphi other than the guy PW who lives there? Danielle, it's not about whether or not one believes Rick is guilty or innocent. It's the amount of blunders being made by the prosecution and the court, Judge Gull, that will lead to questions, reasonable doubt, and appeals. Well, as I said before, is there going to be enough convincing evidence to bypass all of these mistakes and the drama and false, <sighs> whatever, all these whatever mistakes?
Cinder, I want to hear about whatever these fibers they have are also. Yeah, in the Ron Logan search warrant, it references unknown fibers and hairs. We know that um, there's a rumor that, uh, what's his name? Tony Klein, Kagan's dad, his dog, They um, police took the dog's hair. So was there dog hair or cat hair or some kind of animal hair found at the crime scene? Obviously, obviously it's out in the woods. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what these other hairs and fibers could have been. In, I guess this, I forget what it's from. It was from um, the list of items taken from Rick's house on October 13th and his car. And it said they took five swabs or something from Rick's car, inclu including, I think, the carpet in his trunk and maybe the carpet in the front passenger side. I'm not sure if I'm getting that correct. So maybe there could have been like fibers from a car. I'm not sure. I, we'll have to wait and see. Cecil Hotel, everyone found guilty of homicide is entitled to one appeal, not paid by them, themselves. So yes, Rick will appeal unless he pleads out. Well, people keep, keep saying they think Rick is going to plead out, but it's been a year and a half and he's still saying he's innocent. I'll do two more comments and then we're done. How, um, let's see. KT recovers. Is it, it is weird that Rick's wife has nothing on her Facebook from a period of time before and after the murders. Yeah, I think it's from like December, 2016 to June, 2017. It's like six months worth of absolutely nothing on her Facebook. People wonder, did she delete items that maybe showed Rick wearing something like bridge guy? I don't know if uh, the prosecution has looked into Facebook records to see what she may have deleted. Hi, the Captain Howdy. Hi, Miss Norris Musings. People need to use critical thinking. They've got it all figured out or at a mistrial already, yet the actual trial hasn't even occurred yet. Plus, Rick requested to be in a more secure location, i.e. i.e. prison. No, he didn't actually do that. <laughs> um, Rick was arrested and then Tobe Lesenby, the sheriff at the time of Carroll County. I don't know, people diss him, but Tobe Lesenby, like the things I'm sure he's read and heard from crazy people from around the world for five and a half years when before Rick was arrested. I'm sure he thought like it's gonna be clown town outside of Carroll County Sheriff's Office. So he's like, he was like, I only have five full-time jail commanders. I can't hold this guy who's like the most notorious inmate right now. So they filed this motion for safe, safe, keep, safekeeping order because Rick could not be at Carroll County Jail. So it was not Rick who requested to be moved. Yeah, um, please just be polite or moderators just ban people, I don't care. <laughs> I said to, let me go down to the bottom here. Hi, Al on the prowl. You don't think 12 jurors are going to agree. Yeah, I really can't see like there being a resolution to this. It just seems like it's one thing after another that's never going to get resolved, unfortunately. Todd, two of the juvenile witnesses said Bridge Guy had his face covered. Yeah, that's a good point. It's like, how are they giving a description if one of them said 
this was not in the PCA, but uh, for other other places, um, this bitter beat poet guy on Reddit said, one of the girls said, bridge guy had a scarf up to his nose, plus a hat and a hood. So how did one of these girls say he had gray and brown hair? How did one of these girls say he looked like Jimmy Dale Duval, who's like a local pedophile or something, who looks like Rick? Are any of these girls or witnesses or the 3.57 p.m. driver going to get on the stand at the trial and say, yes, that man, Richard Allen, is the guy I saw on the trail, Platform 1 or 300 walking back to CPS? Peter, I've never said that I know that Rick is guilty. I did a spreadsheet showing things that point to guilt and things that point to innocence. And I said, I thought the list of guilty was more convincing than innocent. Please don't go missing. Missing Missy Elliott. I said two more comments, but I'm still going. Uh -oh. Reeker, yeah, this was a false rumor <laughs> added to the list. I heard the fibers were actually cat hairs and they dug, dug up his cat by the flower garden out back, yeah. There was not a cat listed or cat hair listed in the items taken from Rick's house on October 13th. So I don't know if that's true. All right, one more, that's it. <laughs> Or else I'll end with this one. Red sauce. I wonder if they have any biological evidence, potential DNA that can potentially be analyzed as DNA technology advances even more. I don't know. It's never been revealed what type of DNA and where it was found. So obviously we'll have to stay tuned to see what it was. I know there's some kind of DNA technology called MVAC which I think is like a vacuum where they can kind of like extract DNA that prior processes could not. So it seems like for at least whatever, we're, we're up to seven years. Have we ever, or have law enforcement ever figured out who that DNA belonged to? Nobody else has been arrested other than Rick and Rick's DNA does not match the crime scene. So apparently not. All right, that's it for today's live stream. I don't know that we re really learned anything. <laughs> when is my next live stream? I have no clue. Hopefully not for a while, maybe even two months when the trial happens. Thank you as always for everybody joining, sharing your thoughts. Now, KT, there's actually, I think two that I, apparently I'm, apparently I'm getting better at concealing. Uh -oh, I don't wanna highlight some of these things. All right. Bye, everybody. Good night to people in Europe. And I'll see you when I see you. And I'll put I'll make community posts if there's any like major updates that don't require a live chat. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Hopefully we're heading to justice for Abby and Libby. <laughs>